I received an email the other day, on the 20th actually, uh, from this person called Eye to Eye and this bastardization of the Roman numerals. It's really cool because Don Exodus and CDK007 were actually involved in this list, along with many other channels that I often frequent. So this person has the standard subscription list that you would expect. Uh, you have Venifang X featured right up there in the middle. Uh, this person also makes videos with the standard creationist Kent Hoven, Eric Hoven, uh, AIG standard. Now here's the full message. Now I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Um, I'm not actually I'm not going to post on the description bar because you can actually go to AIG itself. Answers in Genesis, and see the whole thing copy-pasted word for word. So what I was going to do is just go point by point and see what this thing has to say, and of course comment, criticize, and see what it, see what we get out of it. Now, as he starts off, we have the common: how do you explain charity? How do you explain goodwill? All that fun stuff. How does evolution account for that? Well, this is pretty simple because we're actually a social animal. Uh, we depend on one another for our individual survival. So, as a species, this is the way we survive. The next part reads, If evolution is true, the driving force of nature of s is survival of the fittest. Those less able to compete are destined to die. Any attempt to rescue these less competitive people would be to work against the most fundamental force of nature. The existence of doctors, hospitals, charitable organizations, and even police force is contrary to the raw evolutionary forces. Okay, now I can't accuse eye to eye of really getting this wrong since he or she didn't actually write any of this. But since he or she probably agrees with this, let's say eye to eye, you're getting it wrong. Fittest doesn't mean strong. It means the most fitted for the given environment. Those best fit for their environment, such as uh, even being camouflaged, survive. As I said before, humans are a social animal. We strongly depend on one another for our individual survival. Here's an example, uh, a really, really easy one. The men from a tribe are on the hunt. One of the best arrowhead makers gets hurt and is unable to walk. Would it best serve the tribe to leave this man to die or to bring him back to camp and take care of him? Which would benefit the group? Leaving him to die or taking care of a really important part of the group? that enables them to survive better. You be the judge of that one. Next we have this quote. If a man is just the result of millions of years of evolution, our behavior is based on random chemical reactions. Sure, let's say they are. How does that make it wrong? These chemical reactions guide us in the right direction, no? This is also a straw man fallacy on your part. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, AIG. And since you probably agree with it, uh, you're making a straw man. There are other ways to look at it. For example, the injured arrowhead maker from before. Second, you can look at things from two points, pain and pleasure. Pleasure is good, you try to maximize it. Pain is bad, you try to minimize it as much as possible. You also have the ability to emphasize with, empathize with others. And there you have it, a reason to be moral. Um, here's a quick question, actually two quick questions. Is it good because God commands it, or does God command it, command it because it's good? And just another, where does God get his morals? Let's get a decent answer to that one. Moving on. There is no ultimate moral code. All morality is relative. This being if evolution is true, which it of course is. Um, eh, the quick answer to this is yes, uh, morality is relative. It's very clear if we take a look at the history of Christianity, for example. So if a person needs money, why is it wrong to rob someone or a bank? According to evolution, the stronger person should succeed. Might makes right. So in, evo in the evolutionary view, such violence is a natural and necessary part of the world. First of all, evolution applies to species, not the individual. Um, in terms of for morality, just rewind a little bit and you'll see my easy examples. Um, violence is not really quote-unquote, natural and necessary. This is a misunderstanding of what is meant by fittest. The fittest, for example, can be an insect that blends into whatever environment to evade birds. No strength is involved whatsoever, but it's still the fittest animal for its environment. 
Those who have a worldview based on the Bible have a consistent basis for acts of kindness, charity, or caring. And to that I say, I challenge you to find one moral act or thought that a religious person can accomplish that I or any non-believer could never accomplish. This is also a good time to quote Steven Weinberg. Religion is an insult to human dignity. With or without it, you'd have good people doing good things and evil people doing bad things. But for good people to do bad things, it takes religion. We are commanded in scripture to love our neighbors as ourselves, to perform acts of mercy and to care for the widows and orphans. This I find to be very revealing. You only do nice things because you're told to, you don't do them just because it's the right thing to do. And again, the question comes up. Here's two quick questions for you. Is it good because God commands it, or does God command it because it's good? And another, where does God get his morals? Are you also saying, oh, wait a minute, uh, AIG is saying it, you just copied it, uh, that I am incapable for caring for my neighbor, performing acts of mercy, and uh, care for widows and orphans? Non-religious do each of these things every day without being told to do so. This, in my view, gives the acts more authenticity than someone who does it simply because a book commands them to. Lastly, only true Christians ultimately offer the world a basis to make moral judgments. Those who reject the Bible have no basis for morality. I have society as a basis for morality. How do you explain a non-believer or a person of any other religion that makes the same good moral judgment as yourself? Uh, assuming that you make good moral judgments. The good from religion borrows from humanism. Morality is not derived from any holy book, especially the Bible. The Bible is the book of multiple questions. You pick and choose what to follow. You accept the thing which matches your sense of morality, and you ignore the things that don't go with your morality. Simple as that. This reminds me of a quote from Steven Weinberg, and I'll leave you with this. Religion is an insult to human dignity. With or without it, you'd have good people doing good things and evil people doing bad things. But for good people to do bad things, it takes religion.